Okay, now we're going to take a look at sanding the parts. I put my sanding block on the sanding board, and then I use that to sand against to get that bottom square. And don't move the block because you'll sand it, but you can move the part. I like to move mine in a circle or an angle, but the block will help you uh, learn to sew the piece up to square it. Now we're going to work on the door. The side lights have two angles, a shallow angle and a sharp angle. We're going to put the shallow angle next to the doorway. Trial fit. And I'll sand those on the sanding block just to get the, the angles back so they're absolutely straight. Then we'll apply some glue to it. Both sides. Softens it a little bit better. And now we'll rub them just a little bit to kind of melt them together. The other side glued up. Both sides. Makes them melt together a little bit better. Just like that, that quickly. And the parts are stuck and ready to put on to the uh, back wall. Now we're going to put some glue on the sides of both here, or both sides of the door, and then we'll line it up to fit just inside the side walls of the door. All right, now I want to sole that down, bottom all that door up. Now it's a little bit out of square. I think you can even see it. The door is leaning this direction. So I want to start playing with a little bit and getting it to square yeah, absolutely up. as square as it possibly can be. And now we're ready to go ahead and glue the other walls on. All right, here we're going to begin to apply the side walls. I line them up with just a little bit of a reveal, just a little bit back from the from the edge of the front. I'm using my fingers on the back to hold alignment while I use the 10X7. It's much faster, glues almost immediately, and we can go to the other side wall. We'll glue it on again with the 10X7, hold alignment. Lost a little bit of some weight, but that's all right. We can just realign. The back is cast a little bit long. We need to sand that down. It's about a half brick wide. So we'll take it over on the sandpaper, give it a couple of swipes, and then we'll check it to make sure that it's the right width. It should be square front to back. Check it with a square, make sure it stayed square. And now we can use its own weight, the building's own weight, to hold it down tight and glue the back wall into place. Again, with the 10X on one side, Align it again on the other side, a little 10x7, and our building goes together just that quickly. It's absolutely amazing. Large bag of these uh, rubber bands, and we'll use a few of them. They're kind of large sized, as you can see, bands, if we can get them apart here. And I'm going to put those around the building, and they're going to go. No, they're a little too loose. Okay, let's double them. Double that over. The beautiful thing about a DPM building is that it can be rubber banded and held together while it dries because of the way uh, Bob Lundy, the founder of DPM, originally designed these buildings. And you can see I'm pretty rough with it and we did just glue it. I've only been gone for about 30 seconds or so here and we're back to working on the building. Now what I can do is take my squaring block if I want and put it in here and uh, clamp to that. but the building's really holding itself pretty square because we sanded all the edges square, so there's really no reason to put a squaring block in. It'll pretty much hold itself uh, the whole time. We'll check the door one more time, make sure that we haven't gone soft on that. And it looks like we're okay on that. It's nice and square. So we'll let that building set for a few minutes, let it dry, and then we'll rubber the bands off. Now one thing I don't do is put the rubber bands on while I'm doing the gluing <clears throat> because I don't want them to get in here and have that glue capillary back in underneath and ruin my uh, my sides. So I don't do that while it's uh, actually going up. But now I can come back and any places where I have some bad places I can come along if it's oozed out at all and just simply give it a light trim. Bring my sanding block back into play here. And <clears throat> what I do have, however, is a little bit of this door hanging down. So I'm going to put my fingers in here and support it and I'm just going to run that over and get that building down as flat as I possibly. That's looking pretty good, and you can't see any gaps down and around the bottom of that building, so that's looking pretty good. We'll lose the sanding. Okay, here we're bringing in our roof section, and we're gonna line up one edge against the front of the building, and make a tick mark at that width. Then we'll simply turn the sheet around, 
and mark it at the back. I'm going to keep the same edge of the plastic against the side of the building. Mark over with another tick mark. Now if I've kept everything straight front to back and side to side, I should be able to simply connect those two marks and I'll be square. If not, I need to make that width mark at the back of the building to keep it from being out of square. A quick scribe, snap, we're in business. Looks good front to back. So we'll put it inside the building now and check it for length. Again, a little tick mark, try not to bow it. And this time we can use a square since we have a pretty much a square building. And we'll go ahead and snap that off. And everything's looking good, except fitting pretty well up the top. It's not fitting at the bottom. All right, so what we can do is bring our sanding block back in and pull it up here. And it's a great little device. We just simply sand down on those edges until we get a fit. It's fitting pretty well at the back. Let's square this. It has a well, we need a little bit of the front, so I'm going to put more pressure on this front part. Sand that down. I just want it to just barely fit in there. I'm trying to do all this. That's fitting pretty well, really, there. I'm trying to do all this before I put the chimneys on. That's fitting pretty square and pretty nice and tight. So that's good. Just so we don't get it confused with the other pieces, we'll mark on the bottom of this that it's the roof. Okay. All right, so now we'll take a look at the chimneys. The chimneys do have a left and a right to them. Let's see if I can get a couple of them here that are opposite. You notice that some of them are sloping back this direction, some of them are sloping back the other direction. So the correct one for my side over here would be this chimney because my roof is going to slope to the back. And I'll look that over. If it has any flash on it, I want to clean it up. It's not too bad. On the back, if I have any kind of an injector pin sticking out, I'm going to file that down. Uh, here's one that's sticking up tall and proud. Take my rough side. Now, <clears throat> I can either use the faller glue and maneuver these around, or I can use the 10X7. I'm kind of going to go for speed, so we'll, we'll go with the 10X7. We'll get a little drop right up there, right on. I usually try and let it ooze a little bit, put a little pressure on this to hold it together. What I'm trying to do here is line up the cap, this top of the chimney, and the sides. I look at it from the side and make sure that it's actually going on there nice and square. And it is. The caps are all lined up, so I'll leave that one alone. And now I'll go ahead and I'll glue up the rest of the chimneys and we'll come back in a second. Alright, I've glued all the chimneys but one. I want to point out one other thing. On the bottom where I have draft angle, I am going to file that and try and maintain the angle that it's going back, but yet make it square. That'll make my roof fit on there a little bit better. So we'll glue this last one in place. Now the draft angle at the top of the chimney, however, by the cap, up on the top, I did not try to file that. I let that ride. Let's see if it doesn't work a little bit better. I don't try and take that draft angle off the top of the chimney, up above the cap just yet. I'm going to use that to my advantage here a little bit later. That gives me a little meat so when I come back and file these I can get them absolutely flat from one to another. So There's our chimneys put together and that's pretty much ready to go. We have our roof already fitted up. Um, so we're really in pretty good shape. We could actually go ahead and start the mount, to mount the roof uh, to the bottom of the building and we'll do that next. Alright, now we're going to start putting our roof in from underneath. We push it up against the chimneys and make sure it's nice and tight. We'll cut the sticks that are supports to the length and drop them in place. A little 10x7 on them. Quick check for alignment. Not bad. Now we'll put some more glue on this or some more solvent on this to make sure that it stays down. I want to melt those chimneys into the roof. So a little on top, a little on the bottom. Tap them in, make sure they're down tight. And then we'll move to the other side. Looking good. Now the last thing we're going to do on this roof is use a little of the faller cement. Remember it has body to it. It has some styrene in it. So by simply running around here 
we are going to create a roof fillet. Whenever a roofing company does their roofing with their black tar, they run the plaster, or the, excuse me, the tar up onto the side of the building. And that's what this is going to do for us, is give us just a little bit of a fillet right there where that tar actually wraps up onto the side of the building. And when that dries, it will dry with a little bit of that fillet just because of the uh, styrene that's left behind by the solvent when it evaporates away. So it's a neat little trick to make your building look better up on top and it only takes a few seconds. The last detail that we have to take care of are the chimneys. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my file on the far chimney, bring it down on the near one, and I'm going to try and keep this fairly level and just stroke once or twice. The main chimney I'm trying to get is the one that's closest to me. And I just want to get it nice and flat. I'll do this on both sides because again the one closest to me is the one I'm trying to get flat. Just enough to take that draft angle off. The last thing I have to do is again bear on the far side, come against this one, and this time I'm trying to square up that side of that cap. And the last thing I'll do is take my Zacto knife and where I have some flesh down here on this side, I'll trim that off. And I'll do that around all four sides of the chimneys.